Okay, we are live. Welcome to Human Colonies Saturday webinar. Today is the 19th of December 2015, and I'm very, very proud to say that Kim is here today to channeling with us. Hi, Kim. Say hello. Hi. How are you happy, doing? Happy. I'm, I'm great, actually. I'm really good. I feel very proud to be here, and I'm glad to give Jim a break. <laughs> yeah, there's not many left for 2015, so it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the year plays out, and next year is going to be exciting too. So, also, yeah. we have Sabrina here today co hosting with me, and hello, Sabrina. Hello, Rowie. Hello, everybody. And welcome to our Saturday webinar with Kim. So I want to uh, welcome everyone who's watching, all the viewers, and all of the people that are here with us today. I want to encourage you to visit our website, humancolony.org. Uh, visit the colonies if that's what you would like to do. And I also want to encourage you to say yes to contact. <laughs> um, and I would like to make a request of, of Amatok comes. Um, it seems that a lot of people are going through a lot of stuff at the moment. So I would welcome any encouragement from him for the people in this planet because it's not just Yukolo, it's all around it seems that there are many things that need to be closed, shadow work that needs to be done so um, if he has any words of wisdom on that it would definitely be welcomed by most. Sure, yep, like, he's the man I can bring him through um, I just want to say thank you, Rowie, thank you, Dan, thank you, Sabrina, and thank you to everyone who's here. Um, this is going to be an awesome webinar. I will do my very best for you all. Uh, and I will take off now if everybody's ready. And uh, I'll bring the man through. I'll see you soon. <laughs> see you soon. Greetings. This be Almata. Greetings, Almata. Greetings, Sabrina. How are you? I am pretty good. Just a little under the weather for my health, but it's fine. My friend, you will be well soon. Yes. I shall send you love. Thank you. So I don't know if you heard the request that I made. Yes. Um, yes, I, I have heard it several times recently. It is being asked in various places on your planet at the moment. There is this stagnance. There is what I coin a phrase for the humans. It's ascension tension. Because there is not much movement, essentially you are in what's called a holding pattern as you would describe it with your aeroplanes. Now, when you're in a holding pattern, how you perceive the holding pattern is entirely up to you. You may look out a window, you may enjoy the view, and each time you move around in that circle of the holding pattern, you may see the same view again and get a different perspective. Alternatively, you may choose to look at each other within the plane 
become annoyed that you are in another space, that there is perhaps a lack of drink or food or sustenance of some kind for each other, or there is some upset child or another who may be snoring or such. I have seen this. And in this way, people become irritated. There becomes tension. There even becomes competition for comfort. Now the earth at the moment is in one such holding pattern as this. Many of you are imploding. You are folding inside yourselves. You are imploding. You are not moving through your holding pattern, looking out the window and enjoying the view. There is much to be learned by being still and being an observer. Now, yes, there is a lesson there being addressed at this time, but you may choose the depth at which this lesson there reaches you, how deeply it touches you, how distressed does it make you, how wonderful is it. Successful lesson there can be an absolute experience of ecstasy. Holding patterns are simply that. They are holding patterns of time for gifts for the humans to look within themselves, not without. Do not look to compete. Do not look to others and say you wish you had this such, you had that such as your neighbours, you had this such as you viewed on your television. You're creating this tension. This tension, it gets in the way of your ascension. Now competition is something that is vastly experienced on your planet and it is even valued. This is interesting. Competition is another word I liken to judgment. It is one I ask you not to choose. It is one I ask you to substitute with the word assessment. Again, competition in itself is a three-dimensional human creation. It derived from the idea of ascending, assessing, self-reflection. You have this ability, you have this natural drive. You are able to look around you. You are also able to look within you. Now when you look within you with the idea of assessment in looking at your surroundings, in dealing with what perhaps was a lessonary process, then that is the time for you to strive for excellence, not to compete. This is about you striving for you to be the best you may be. If you compete, you create segregation. Segregation, vast segregation that evolves even into death in your wars. This is competition. This is competition over currency, over land, over belief systems. It is vast. If this ability that you have was used as a tool to look at others with honour and respect and as teachers, not at the material gain that may be around them, so this too does play a purpose, and look to inside and find the way that they may be the best that they can, that they strive for excellence, excellence my friends. You are all individually very different, so individually your excellence is going to shine, it will be magnificent and it will differentiate you, it will still keep you unique, you will simply be the best that you can be. So please value yourselves. Understand these abilities that you have, these three-dimensional emotions, these three-dimensional ideas that you take on. Please 
look within. Do not look at materialism around you. The point is your growth. Now, I did say there is a place for materialism, and there is. Human beings, in their build, in their cellular, biological makeup, in their subconscious minds, and their conscious ones, humans have basic needs. Needs such as sustenance, needs such as respect, love, liquids, food, basic elements to survive in the environment that they have found themselves in, that they have created for themselves. Now if one of these needs is missing, and I also mention most definitely one of them is love. If one of these is missing, then you have a human who has a need that needs to be filled before they will be able to look inside themselves and find out where it is they must strive for excellence. But when a human is operating in a mode that perhaps you might call autopilot because they are striving to simply put what you would call food on the table for a family, it is very difficult for a human to give themselves the time to share the idea, to learn new ideas of themselves, the awakening, the understanding. It is almost impossible for these beings. They take on their responsibilities and they take them on for their families as well. Now herein, if these families are motivated by competition, it will remain destructive. However, there are some who have come in on the planet where it has become necessary for them to simply exist in this way. The lesson there is to fulfill these three dimensional needs. There is purpose in them. So some will never look towards the idea of awakening, as you call it, ascension. It simply will not be presented in front of them. This be appropriate. And this is why I stress to you very often, your individual belief systems are very important. They are about your journey, not about others. So you imposing your belief systems on another is only going to again, I bring you back to the idea of ascension tension. It will divide, it will not unite. And the goal, the ultimate goal, is unification. So when I say to you, when you take on your belief systems, and those of you who are concerned, out of love very often, for those around them who they see, they may perhaps be self-damaging, they may see very clearly an objective view of an experience of another third dimensional being and certainly you may offer advice. However, for these people their experience is their lessonary. If they choose to take on your advice out of true interest, this is wonderful and if they don't, this is wonderful too. Not everybody on this planet or any other three dimensional planet has incarnated for some of the great ideas that are shared amongst you all. They have other purposes. So this is why I do reiterate to you also, leadership, be the teacher. Do so by demonstration, please. If you have your awakening, you hold on to your belief systems, and you grow upon them, and they are of purity, and you are finding your world around you is becoming far more simple, less complex, because you are experiencing less ascension, tension, then this is wonderful, but this is not the journey for others. 
the majority of you who are on the awakened path at this time are well and truly ready for what is to come. There are still few who will come to the realization very quickly. They will grow very fast because there is an impending event and it is coming. Now I share this with you to assist you with your holding patterns. They are not eternal. Reflect back upon your lives. Do you see how there has been what you call stages? Periods of time where you have felt what you call stuck. Periods of time when you have thought you could not find the answers. Where it has created ascension tension. Where it has created conflict. Where it has been painful. These periods, they pass. And they present themselves to teach you a lesson. To teach you how to handle the holding pattern. How to keep your view out the window and consistently be an observer. For you what it is that is going on around you. You do not necessarily have to react. Respond perhaps. Responsibly, yes. But react with reflex. Please, on yourselves far more than that. You have the ability. You are three-dimensional greatness with time on your side. So as you journey through this holding pattern that you speak of, many of you are unwell, many of you are experiencing all kinds of difficulties and many, it is currency. Please know, this is temporary. Remind yourselves, you have been on this planet for long enough now, if you are listening to this, remind yourselves, this is just a stage. Be kind to each other in the meantime. Be tolerant. Limit the competition. Limit the tension. Remove the tension. Ascension may wait. There is no rush. For if you move too fast, unless this is your purpose, you will not, as you say, stop and smell the roses that only bloom once in your year. So this will be my message to you and answer to your question. Is this helpful? Yes, thank you. That was very good. Very good. Is there questions? Does does anyone have any questions? Uh, Mikiko wanted some clarification on the competition. Uh, do you want to ask that, Mikiko, yourself? Um, yes, hi, I'm a talk. Hello, Mikiko. Hello. Um, I was not aware or not understanding that competition is a competition in terms of how fast? Uh, um, could you elaborate that, please? Yes. Are you asking competing with regard to ascension, how quickly one should move? Is that your question? Uh, no. Uh, I just want to clarify that's what you are talking about. No. When I refer to competition, I refer to that as being a byproduct of the attention, of the ascension and tension. Then it becomes competition. We want to eliminate competition. We want to rename it. We want to use it as a reflection upon ourselves. Now if we wish to compete with ourselves, then what we are doing is striving for excellence, mastery. This um, is how I the word competition. Yes, there was more. Uh, are we competing for ascension? Many of you are not, no. But at this period of time, there are many who are. How we go, how we may compete? What is the goal? 
Humans tend to reflect their personal growth through their egos. They do not connect very much with their humility. And when there are periods of time where the growth appears to be stagnant and they wish to be moving further forward and they look to those around them and perhaps there are some that they believe are more highly evolved than they are. Now this is an illusion my friend, you are all equal. However, you have free will and you make your own decisions and choices. So if you are in a holding pad situation and you look to another on that plane who seems to have a more comfortable seat than you, then this can build resentment. This can build and create competition. There are those who do believe they are more highly ascended than most. You even have a name, Ascended Masters. Now, if this is what you choose to believe, this is fine. But what I'm asking you to do is to eliminate competition between each other. No matter what it is, individually, each of you are of greatness. You have great gifts. You are wondrous humans connected to the greatness of source. You all have a purpose and you all have a directive. You are all equals. It does not matter at what speed you move through your growth. Ascension will occur. Growth will occur. You will experience your journey to and you will receive your lesson there. The timing is what's important, not the time. So we need to eliminate the idea of competition Make it much more personal. Do not look to others to compare yourself. Do not look to them and see them as being any greater than you. They may be different. They may have different abilities, as you would say. They may have different knowledge. It may be the kind of knowledge you would like to have. Now, please recognize that as you striving for excellence of yourself. Mastery of yourself. Seek to be the student from this teacher. But do not view it as competition. If you have several in a classroom, and this is the way it works on your planet in many of your schools, you have a hierarchical system of the speed at which your individual children learn. This could be very damaging. It starts at a very young age. And the self-perception of the being that is experiencing this kind of grading system is very unfair and very hurtful. And it is no wonder there is so much depression amongst your youth with your schooling systems in the situation that they are in. Because they are competitive. They are not recognising that these children as individuals have the ability to reach excellence in their particular specialty. The importance in finding what is in finding what your purpose is. What is it that you will be excellent at? Because for each of you there is something very important. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. May yeah. I follow that? Yes. So, in the previous centuries, um, the older energy competition did play quite an important part. Um, is it because we're in a new energy now that it's been looked on this way? There's more than just a new energy. It is the ability to communicate with each other now and it's so freely effective between you all. Even how we are communi communicating now, obviously this was not something that you were able to do hundreds of your years ago. Sure. Competition was a very different experience then and so were your battles. Your wars now, they too are worsened because of the technology that you have. Now, as with all humans and when technology is shared with you, and oftentimes it will come from another dimension, the 
time, the timeliness, has not been very effective. Nuclear power is one of those. This idea infuses so much fear into your populace. It is at the base of your wars. There is this belief, very interesting belief, that there is one singular button that may be pushed to let off a nuclear warhead on your planet and destroy it. Now this is the technology that can also be used for very productive ideas and many of you know this. However, this is not the opinion of 100% of your population and it is used as a threat against yourselves. Now it was the technology that was given to you but it's a technology that was not necessarily done with effective timing because humans simply were not ready. They still are not ready to fully embrace the responsibility of that power. And this is where the space-time continuum becomes important. Okay, Errors are so made at times. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Thank, you Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello, Amata. Hello, Sabrina. I have a question have a from question. Luca. Yes. He said, what is the point in changing yourself when on the highest level all that is is still experiences even the deepest negativity? He said, for example, shift into a world where there is only peace and positivity, what is the point when there are infinite amount of parallel realities with Earth in constant world a war. Yes, this is another belief system. This was from Luca, correct? Yes. Thank you. This is about belief systems. Now, if Luca chooses to believe this belief system, then yes. I imagine that would be a very challenging idea for humans to hold on to. But I would also advise Luca that in his greatness, he may change his belief system. He may choose to look at those parallel worlds and have them be at peace. It is his reality. It is his belief system. He may make it whatever he chooses. He has free will. So I would say to Luca, please do not limit yourself, particularly into belief systems that do not serve you. This is not resonating with you, Luca. You are struggling with this idea. Let it go, my friend. Replace it with another. There is vast information available to you that will explain how and why this idea does not have to be disbelief. You have choices and you create your own realities. So shift it. Please shift your belief system into something magnificent. Shift it into something that will make you the best you can be. Something that will inspire you to be excellent. Please do not drown yourself in these worries. There is no need. Lift yourself up. You are wonderful. You are a human and you are a greatness of source. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Michelle? Good morning, Alma Talk. This is Michelle. Good morning, Michelle. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you, my friend? Um, very well, mostly. <laughs> so um, I was noticing that uh, last couple of weeks people seem very excited about the idea of contact and if I recall um, I've heard from you and others that we cannot even feed our own people and in my 
experience in the last couple of weeks. We can't even be nice to each other. Um, so I, um, I, I feel like this holding pattern that you're talking about, I feel like a lot of people seem to want something to happen like something for nothing. You know, come save us from ourselves. Yes. Um, that is my perception. And um, Yes, they are not taking self-responsibility for their own actions or their behaviors. True right. responsibility with humility and integrity, yes. Yes. Did you have uh, further? Well, it's just um, I wanted you to speak to what our responsibility is on that because, I mean, we do have a responsibility to raise the vibration of the planet and to act in ways that reflect that, um, even us as a group, um, you know. As a collective. Yes, as a collective, we the, we have certain responsibilities, and in thinking about that and watching some, I don't know, what behavior that did not resonate with me, um, it just made me know kind of that love, we have love and fear to deal yes. with, and in that I want to choose love. And I want that to be expressed in whatever way, which leads me to my second question, which, you know, I have no, um, I don't have any kind of need for the aliens to come and save me from myself. Um, I need to save me from myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to know how I um, can, what a practical way is for me to get in touch with why I came here to know my life's purpose, or is that an open-ended situation? Like, did I, before I come, do I choose, like, I'm going to help the Ascension in this way, like, this is what I think is my plan, or is it just like, Oh, it just happens however it happens um, because you know I would like to be um, I'd like to do what I can to be not only practicing my highest excitement but also being of use yes and so I would like to know um, I think you know Brooke <laughs> she has gotten she has gotten a job and moved out. Um, and um, exactly as you said. And uh, the. So now it's my turn. And I'm just wondering where to take that. And I know it's not really another being's responsibility to answer that for me. But if it were possible, I would totally take it. But I don't think that's the point. I'm so. happy to the question, Michelle. I need you to break them down for me. There were several questions in there. <laughs> okay. Number one, what is your viewpoint on contact? Um, First contact. And them, yeah, like I feel like um, it's my perception. I'm not saying I'm correct. It's just my perception um, that people just or there might be a mindset like, "Please come save us from ourselves, so we don't have to endure our own misery." Yes. Um, okay. Please, may I address that? Yes. Firstly, first contact is not going to bring you relief. It will not bring any human relief of any kind. It will actually be a neutral experience once they are accepted. Initially, potentially, at the moment, the probability is that the arrival will be a subtle one. Now there will be a populace such as yours, many other groups, who will be contacted 
in different ways. Now, they will be able to interact and have what you call first contact with these beings. This is the probability at this point. Now, this is highly changeable. There are many minds involved in this idea. The timing is coming. That is not debatable. The variable is who and how. They are not going to come and save anybody from themselves. Understand this. Any incarnate being is also on a spiritual journey of their own. They have their own lesson area. So even though you may have a fourth, fifth, sixth dimensional being arriving on your planet to introduce themselves and befriend you, they too are still on a spiritual journey of lessonary. Now they may have learned further lessons than yourselves at this point. And yes, it may turn into a teacher-student idea eventually. Acceptance will take time. Understanding will take time. And the aliens who do land will create something amazing on the planet to prove they are trustworthy. Now when I say something amazing, there is a probability that it will be something along the lines of ending hunger in your world. Your children who die every minute, even as we speak, from lack of food for this population, they will address these ideas to earn your trust. In that way, they may come in and save you. But they will not come in to a group such as yours and pick you up and lift you up higher. No. And they will not come down to you. This sounds hierarchical. I want to change that. It is not. You are all equal beings. You are all part of source. Your knowledge is different. Your ability is different. Your technology is different. Yes. But you are all part of source looking for lessons. Now the beings who are chosen to come to your planet, they will be chosen for their personal growth as well. This is not something that has been designed to be completely about the blessing of first contact coming to the earth. This is a dualistic idea. They will learn too by coming here. And they will take their lessonary and they will share it with other three dimensional planets and fourth and fifth and etc. The information they will gather will be vast and it will be shared via the great assemblies and ideas will be taken and implemented from your planet as this process happens. So there will be no rescuing or saving, as you say. But there most definitely will be listening. Does that answer that first part of your question? Yeah, so I think I misinterpreted then the idea that we needed to get some of these things under control before perhaps they came to visit us. When right. you say some of these things, are you talking about... Um, I'm talking about... Um, yeah, feeding people, uh, making sure our hungry are fed, that we are doing, you know, that we are on at least a peaceful path. Um, yes, I use before. that example deliberately. Yeah. The example of feeding your hungry. Yeah. Because this is something that collectively as a population on your planet you resonate with. Imagine if this were to happen, if a species were to come in and feed your hungry, save your children that belong to you all, imagine an earth with no hunger, with all needs, basic needs that I referenced just earlier, met. This will bring the planet to rise. The planet as a whole then will be ready to ascend. The ascension of Gaia will begin. Now the gesture of feeding your hungry is one that would be done by a species that means to come in to earn trust. Trust is a big issue. 
Fear is a big issue. By doing something as wonderful as this on your planet and then coming to land and announce that they did it for you and they come with goodwill and they make these grand gestures and then they say they wish to befriend you. That is it. They wish to befriend you. They wish to have contact. Now what that evolves into, how many of you have thought as first contact comes, as their arrival comes, as you have that first interaction, what then? What then? What will populations such as yours do? How will you react? Will you choose to continue to interact with the aliens? Will you expect them to leave again? Will you befriend them? Will you offer them home on Earth? I ask you to think beyond the first contact idea because this is important too. The aliens who come, they need this information because this is part of how they will make the decision of who will come. So yes, was there more questions? Yeah, I was wondering, um, well first a really quick one about can you verify whether or not I saw a grey in my room? <laughs> yes, you did, Michelle. <laughs> okay, just check in because I was wondering if maybe I was seeing things. Okay. And the other thing um, was about finding one's life purpose. Do we come to this earth knowing that we kind of want to accomplish a particular thing and, you know, our life kind of travels that way or we completely just don't ever get there? Um, did I make a soul contract before I came to accomplish a particular thing? And if I did, how do I find out what it is? Practical application. <laughs> yes, understood. Now, first of all, the idea of the contracts, you called it a soul contract. They're referred to as agreements. They're referred to as many things. They're actually ideas that are created while you're up in spirit and you are looking at your lessonary because you do still experience lessonary and you evolve when you are in spirit. And there are times when it's more effective for a group of you to incarnate and come in onto a planet to become more connected to the source within you and have your lessonary here. Now this is with purpose. This is by design. Your spirit group is a gathering. It's a collective. You are a major part of it. Now to understand the complexity of this, it is almost impossible. But I will say to you, for your lessonary, your choice you made to come in and the decision you made that you were ready to have these experiences to lead you to learning also includes those of your spirit group who agreed to come in themselves and play these roles in your life and complete them, assist you and support you in reaching your final destination. Then each of those have their own lessonary as well. So there is reciprocation. It becomes very complex. Many of you have agreements. You all have a place to be, somewhere to go, a purpose, growth, or you would not be here. You would not choose the planet Earth. So as you do that and you make the agreements and you come in in your spirit group, and you all have lessonary, you are all playing parts, you are all interacting, it's ever changeable, there's variables, the purpose may alter. This is the journey. Now the indicator along the way of the journey is your spirit realm. It is no coincidence that you have what is called spirit guides. There are those who stay behind and part of your spirit group. And their job is to guide you all together as best they may, for you must listen to hear them. Also, the universe, as you would name it, you may call it source. As you journey on your three-dimensional 
lives and become lost in the materialism and mass of it, you also lose your connection, your awareness of your connection to source. If you remain aware of your connection to source, you remain self-aware, you remain self-mindful, you are responsible for yourself, you understand how you affect the interactions around you, what you attract, what you repel, it is self-wisdom. The universe will give you indicators as you move through your lifetime. They will become at first very gentle ones, gentle nudges, gentle signs, subtleties, synchronicities as you like to call them. There will be signs. Now, if you do not understand that this is something that will happen, then of course you are not going to acknowledge them. Then what happens? Is these gentle taps become firmer. You have experiences that are more intense. There are patterns that keep repeating because you are not addressing what is being shown to you. This is your lesson area. If you continue again without taking notice of the lesson area, ultimately you will meet with some form of very painful disaster. It is harsh, but you choose tough love when you choose not to honour yourself. The universe loves you, the multiverse loves you and source loves you. They are as committed to you as you are to you. So you will have your lessonary before you. You will come if you become aware of what goes on around you as being a reflection, you will come to understand what it is your purpose is about. Your journey, Michelle, yours, you know, your purpose, you are playing it out. You have played much of it out. Is there another question? Thank you so much, Alan Talk. Much love. You're welcome, Michelle. Much love. Angela? Hello, how are you? Hello, Angela. I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I, I feel that I am on my pr uh, the right track with my purpose. Um, I have gotten some um, wisdom and knowledge regarding that. Um, I just wanted to make that comment and I just want maybe some affirmation on that. Yes. I would like to congratulate you, Barbara. Your vibration is stunning at this time. Yes, you are correct. You have found your purpose. You are moving through it. There is still more to journey along. There is a touch more to learn, but you will master it. Now, please understand, Barbara. Allow yourself to feel positive about this. Allow yourself to feel some excitement. Allow yourself to feel some joy and allow yourself to feel some pleasure because you deserve it. You deserve it simply by being here. So I would simply like to say to you congratulations and please continue. You are doing wonderfully. Thank you. Um, the second part of my question is um, um, I have a women's group and we um, recently had um, someone come to our group to give us some you know guidance and lessons and um, things to help the planet um, his his name is Ramos I'm not sure if you're aware of him yes yes I'm, I'm aware if, of him yes I'm wondering if you could just give us give me a little bit of information on him He's a man of well-meaning. He has a journey himself. He is actually learning as he is going, if that makes sense to you. So humans have a saying, you learn as you go along. This is what this gentleman is doing. He is learning actually what he's teaching during the same process. So he is not actually a master of what he is teaching at this point. He will be. But it is productive that he's putting himself out there and he's sharing information to everybody. 
because he is also sharing it with himself. He is one that it serves to hear himself think out loud. If that makes sense to you also. Yes, it does. So as he presents to you the information, he's also presenting it to himself. So he is hooked in to a greater idea, but he does not know as much as he thinks he does. So as time goes on, he will come to understand that. He will gain some more humility. But yes, he is doing wonderfully also. And please appreciate him for the fact that he is projecting his support and his will for you to grow. Okay. Please remain grateful. Yes. yes. We will thank him as a group. Yes, thank you. Um, do you have any message for me? Yes. But I spoke to you a moment ago about joy. I would really like for you to set yourself a goal within the next seven days to do something with whomever you choose that makes you joyful, truly joyful, beyond all your filters that you have built in your three-dimensional world. I wished you to experience true joy. May I ask that of you, and may I leave that in your capable hands? Yes. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome, my friend. Hello, dear Alma Talk. This is Noha. Ah, no. How are you doing? Ah, hello. Hello. I got two questions. Very First well. of all, how are you? Thank you. Uh, first of all, of course, a second question is a message for me. But first one is, what makes an Ascended Master an Ascended Master? Because by being good on planet Earth and wishing the best for the others and all that, doesn't make you an Ascended Master, you know? So what that make them have that edge? An Ascended Master. They become an Ascended Master because it's the populace that elevates them to that divinity. So it is actually the humans. Let's use human ascended masters here. They become ascended masters because you name them as such. It is the same as what you call your saints, your saintly beings. You gift these titles to these beings. This is your belief systems as a collective, also based on your history. So ascended masters are ascended masters because, yes, they potentially have done something magnificent on your planet and it has reached far and wide, but you chose to give them that title. That's the difference. That is the only difference. Is so are, are, we, are, are we as uh, light workers, as a whole group in human colony, are we all ma ascended masters in the future, I hope? <laughs> <laughs> My friend, you may be an ascended master right now if you choose to be. If you wish to be named that, then demonstrate the leadership of an Ascended Master and you will find that this is what you will be named. It is that huh. simple. Okay. It's what you uh, project and you perceive it. That's what you are saying. I hope so. Exactly. <laughs> I hope I am. Okay. Wish well, I well. am then. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very All good. Right. The second question, any messages? Mm. Yes, I also would like to congratulate you, Noha. You have done what humans would call pull back a little. Your family, your friends, those around you, who you have felt solitude, you have felt separated from because you have an unusual belief system. And there was a period of time there where you wanted, out of love and good intention, you wanted to project your belief system upon them. Now, understandably, this was difficult, but you have eliminated that. You have backed off on that idea, and as such, there is less ascension tension. You are actually resonating more equally now in vibration and unison because you've stepped back and you've understood that this is your journey, not necessarily theirs, and you are finding that you are being called upon for support out of respect and out of your demonstration of your belief system. So I congratulate you, Noha. Well done.
She dropped off, but I'm sure she'll hear the the answer. Yes, Sabrina. Thank you. You're welcome. But tell. Uh, Salish? Check his microphone. Oh, it's not working. You want to go, Rory, ask Lainey's question? Yeah, Salish, if you can get your um, microphone working, we'll get you in afterwards. Um, greetings, Alma Talk. Um, I have a question from uh, Lainey. Yes. It's more of a statement, actually. Um, she's been experiencing a ringing in her ears of a high-pitched, um, very audible, very clear, no distortion. Um, is this just another one of these ascension tensions? Or is this something a little bit more individual for her? Yes. It is individual for her because of the exceptional relationship that she does have with the being of another dimension. Now, in Lighty's situation, she very easily moves her frequency. So as you do with your radios and you retune the frequency of your radios, you may do this individually within yourselves. Now, Lighty has attuned herself into a frequency. She's found herself there by accident, however. It's not by choice. However, she may remove herself from that frequency rather easily. Now, she's a vibrational being. Lani understands this. And she may also reach out to this other being that she is in contact with support here. She needs to shift. Now, it is a literal idea of auditory listening. There is something that she is resisting hearing and she is using this sound to block it. Now if she lets this sound go, she understands that this is actually a distraction for her. It's distracting her from things that are going on around her in her three-dimensional world. It is getting her to a point also where she feels frustrated. It's not serving her. She may let it go. She may choose to change the frequency. She simply needs to be aware that she can allow herself to open herself up, open her hearing up, to listen to what it is that's being said to her. To understand she has a choice whether or not she wants to agree with what's being spoken to her about. She is not obligated. Then this ringing in her ears, as she calls it, should very well shift and very well shift quickly. If it is persistent and it does not go within a 14-day period, I would say to her, please approach one of your doctors, your specialists on your earth. Yeah, thank you for that. I'm, I'm sure she will find um, a lot of great information in that. So thank you very much for answering. Yes. Who is next? Salish. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, hello. Um, namaste, Omata. Uh, it's been some time, some time since we've talked together. Um, okay. I'd like to... Yes, I'd like to just make a statement because this is very unusual for me. I mean, I've been trying for weeks to get through this webinar, and today it's happened for whatever reason. And before I came on, I had so many questions on my mind, and all of a sudden, my mind has just gone completely, totally blank. Yes. So, so really, I do have one question. Can you comment on why this has happened to me? And are there any messages in this uh, specific occurrence? This has happened, Salish, because you did not expect it to happen. You've arrived in a place 
that you had given thought about. You have thought about coming to a webinar, attending a webinar, being present. This was your desire, but once you got here, you hadn't given any thought as to what you might do. It is curious and it is humorous. So please, my friend, do not be embarrassed <laughs> or upset about it. Oh, no, that's Did the last. I, I'm, I can never be upset. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yes, it's absolutely fine. Perhaps now that you're aware of that, one of your questions may return. But this is just simply something that you hadn't given some thought to. That is all. May I oh, ask, yeah. however, how is your sister? Ah, my sister, she just left. Um, she just left. Uh, but the, the other sister I was talking to about, uh, she passed away in June. The 20th of June, she passed across the veil then. Yes, blessings, my friend. Yes. Yeah, and my this sister, the one who was here earlier on, who left uh, just after the webinar started, um, she's very, very open, so open, and she channels a lot, but her guides and higher self do not do Q&As with me or anyone. Ah, that is continuing, uh, yeah? Yes, that is continuing. They will not uh, do any Q's, Q's and A's, especially with me. They All they're saying to me is, you are here for her support. Yes. And that is all there is to it. Guess, okay, questions come then. What is my role with her? You my just sister. named it yourself, my friend. You are here with her to be a support system. Mm. She's not the one that will give you the answers that you seek. You are too close. Your relationship, ah. the way that you interact with each other, the fact that you were brought up with the same parents, etc., etc. There are times when humans can be far too close to each other to be objective about ideas such as this. You do serve her greatly though. Please understand this. The fact that you believe in her and the fact that you support and understand, even though it may frustrate you at times, understand that the information that she has available to her, she will not share with you. Please do not take that as a personal reflection. It is not. It is actually an honor because you have decided and you chose to come in and be a support system for her so that she may work with these concepts herself with others. So I honor you, my friend. Please continue to do that for her. It's very important. Okay. What I will do is I will thank you and I will arrange a session with Kim to have a chat with you and let others ask their questions. I appreciate and honor your reply. Thank you. Lovely. Much love, Celeste. Speak soon. And, okay. Namaste. Namaste. Hello, Amatak. I have a question from Guru Dan. Yes. He would like to know. Here, let me. Um, um, oh, <laughs> he changed his question on me. Do you have any messages? Do you have any messages for him? <laughs> yes. Could you please pass on to Dan that further to our previous conversation that he is doing well and please be less concerned about who he calls the brown-haired girl. Andrew has spoken with him about this. We are aware and we are watching and his healing is going very, very well. We are very impressed with the efforts he is putting in and his level of commitment is great. He was well chosen for this purpose. So please pass that on to him. That would be my message. Okay, thank you. And on that note, I would like to say that he also said if there's any members that can use some healing to yes. please uh, send your name to him and he will send you some healing. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. 
anybody else that's here have any more questions? I have one if that's okay. Okay, go ahead, Brooke. Hi, Alma Talk, it's Brooke. Brooke, hello. Hello. Um, how are so you? I'm very well, how are you? Very well, thank you. Excellent. Um, so I have a question, and I don't like asking these kinds of questions on a webinar, but um, I got invited to work at the world's biggest crystal show in Arizona, and I can't figure out if I would be a good fit or not, and I don't know. Yes. My goodness. My friend, dear Brooke, you know you would be a fabulous fit, my friend. This would be an environment where you would thrive. I would encourage you to follow this invitation, please. This is something that can expand your growth and your abilities, which are very special, give you a greater understanding of what it is you are actually doing day to day at this point in time. You will come away from that idea with much more appreciation for what you are doing on a daily basis. And also, it will support you in interacting with those very close others around you. So, Brooke, please, have faith in yourself. You're a very special girl, and you may go as far as you choose. And these kinds of events, they're perfect for you. Okay, I'm going. Very good. Please enjoy, my friend. Thank you so much. Johannes, did you have a question? Yeah, I feel like I can just talk a little bit. Hello, Elma Talk. Johannes, how are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm good. I'm right now. I'm having like a a break. Uh, half hour break, so I'm laying down actually. So I'm, I'm actually really, really good. So oh, I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that you are taking some time for yourself, yes. So I'm thanking you for all the answers that you've been giving us today. And uh, love to everybody that is attending today's webinar and everybody who's listening. So thank you, Emma Todd. Thank you, Johannes. Much appreciated. Much love, my friend. Valerie? Hello, Emma Talk. Valerie, hello. Hi. I feel like I am doing so much better since we last talked. Oh, your vibration is beautiful. Oh, yes. Thank you. I've mm. had a lot of losses this year, but also understood um, that that's just part of life and that that's not the last time that we will communicate. Um, so I guess I've learned balance in the last few months as well. Yes. Um, my question is, I feel like I connect in all ways, but so far there just seems to be a block. Can you help me with where the block is and what I need to work on? Valerie, what is it you want to connect to? I would like to connect to my higher self. Yes. I'm going to ask you to do something that I do ask many humans. Please, eliminate the word block. There is no block. There is simply another way to do it. Now there may be, depending on what it is you choose, what is your, what is your outcome, that you are aiming for here. When and open communication. That, yes, okay. So this is just simply with your spirit realm, yes? Yes. Yes, okay, understood. What that takes is what you already have achieved in your meditation times, in your times, your quiet times, when you have spoken with yourself. You understand what your vibration is. Now this is true for every human. Once you come to understand what your own individual vibration is, then the vibration of another becomes much easier to identify and then it may build into a communication. Now, 
spirit typically on the planet Earth communicates through dream time. You may open yourself up by simply making the request as you go off into your dream time that you would like to have some communication with a particular spirit. You may also ask your own spirit realm if they may pass a message from them to you through your dream time. Now your higher self, your higher self is very likely not to identify itself. Please do not be offended if this is the case. This is a decision that has been made to avoid, as I spoke of before, competition mm -hmm. and ascension tension. So have faith, have faith that your higher self is great. That is plenty. Now, if you want communication with them, then you need to seek out the source and the vibrational part of you that is spirit. If you can go into a meditative state deep enough where it appears in front of your eyes that there will be a shade of blue, a cylindrical shade like a, a ball of blue, it will come to you, it will appear from the distance, it shall move closer to your eyes. As they are closed, of course, you are using your third eye or your alt eye, however you wish to call it. As that happens, and you identify it, this piece of energy that's presenting itself to you, please understand, this is you in spirit. Okay, I have seen that before. Very good, my friend. Very good. Now, that experience you may use to contact your spirit realm and that of others. You have identified your own spirit. You have identified what that feels like, what it looks like. Now, when you're in that state and you claim that vibration for yourself, for your own, request in that state, will you please speak with me? I would like to speak with my higher self. Now, it does not need to be that elaborate. However, it is an option that does work and is effective for humans. And given that you can identify your own spirit, then please, I encourage you to go this way because your messages will become very deep. They will be very clear. There will be no question as to what they are. But there are varying ways. Again, as I said, the dream time. Also, the request with your spirit realm to communicate actually with you and they may use various means. If you do request that, please be aware they will use various means to communicate with you if they are not able to get through to the subconscious and you become aware of what the communication is. They will give you indicators in other ways. There will be again what you call synchronicities. There will be Things, for example, may I give you this idea? This is something too that many humans have spoken to me about. Where there is a loss or a death, a spirit has moved, shifted on to another realm. Oftentimes, what happens, there are coins, what you call your currency, your coins. Now, this is fairly classic amongst all the currency on your planet. Now, when you move through your days, Often what they do is they will place a coin in a place where you will notice it. Now, normally, perhaps you might simply walk past it. It may be of no value to you. But I would say to you, these small events can be very significant. If you pick up this coin and you look at the coin, and particularly look at the date the coin was stamped, when was the date that this piece of metal was created to be currency? Then think back to a time that you may know of one in spirit that this number is relevant to. This will be communication from this particular spirit, acknowledging you, acknowledging your request. Now I'm talking to you here of spirits that you have known in this incarnation and they have moved on obviously. I'm not talking to mm -hmm. you about those in your realm. But this is another way to reach out for spirit and I share this with you for all of your information. That's awesome. I just found a penny. 
<laughs> under the counter ah. the other day. That was interesting. Very good, my friends. Look at the date. I will. Yes. So yes, there are many ways. The the way in which you are vibrating right now, connection should be relatively easy for you. Sit with the blue ball idea. Look for interaction from other blue balls. Initially, they will present in that way. If you can persist, you will actually receive a visual on what they would have looked like to you when they were incarnated. This is very possible. So I would hmm. encourage you, since you have begun that journey, to continue on that path. It will be fascinating for you. Oh, thank you so much. Much love on the talk. Much love, my friend. Oh, hello, I have a question. Oh, yes. Who is this? My, my name is Sam. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Um, I wanted to actually expand on the contacting with the higher self. Yes. I, I feel this week I have got it in contact, but um, once the description of my higher self and different in incarnations were described to me, um, I really started to take it a lot of disbelief. So I, I now I feel lost. I don't know if I was. Was I really talking to my higher self? I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yes, you are doubting yourself. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. How much of this information did you gather yourself, and was any of it shared with you? Um, this information, yeah, I did. Well, I, I, I work with pendulums a lot, and I've been like trying to get out in nature because I've had a lot of life changes, and in doing all of this. Um, I guess the question started to come about. Yes. What wonderful timing, my friend. Yes. I would say to you, ask for less detail. Please start out. Keep the dialogue open, but keep it simple. Simple so that it resonates with you. And also, I would say to you, ask it to be a form of guidance, perhaps for something minor. Okay. Something that will give you a response, a cause and effect situation, so that you may go out and test this philosophy for yourself. It is the only way that you will get over the idea of your self-doubt. It's very easy for me to just say to you, be done with the self-doubt, it's gone. But your journey requires the process. The process in this case is you need to have some proof. You have the right to that. Yes. So yes, I would say to you, ask for some small direction, some direction that if you act you will receive some kind of feedback, it will all be synchronistic and then you may go back to trusting yourself and your higher self. Thank you. You're welcome. I also, I, also, um, I had an experience when I was outside uh, meditating and it seemed like I could have went back a few moments in time. I just want to get some confirmation if that's what happened. Yes. That's My friend, that is very simple. Congratulations and well done. Thank you. Yes. Please continue with that. I will. Thanks. It will assist you in your memory. Okay, we had a question from Andrew, and he said, Will our magical healing and medium abilities increase? Magical healing and healing abilities, yes? Yes. Yes, they will, most definitely. Let us look at your history. If we want to keep the answer to this strictly three-dimensional, we may even look to that. Look at your history and look at the vast changes, the vast improvements that have been made in your history through the scientists and the scientists and the people who work the machines and the, administer the medications, all the kinds of things that define medicine on your earth. 
Now you are also looking at energetic healings now. This is wonderful. There's also spiritual healings too that can be very effective. They are going to become more and more popular again. They were used more 20 or 30 years ago, but they will have a resurgence. Now there is technology, there is more healing technology that will be offered to the humans. It has already been decided. It will be offered, but it will seem as if it is a discovery. This is fine. But yes, of course, the magical healing, most definitely, it does exist. And it appears to be magical and it appears to be miraculous. But it is proof of the power of the greatness of the human. But please continue to call it those wonderful words because you are embracing it and it is a reflection of the great, wonderful, and may I quote Noha, ascend of masters that you all have. So the short answer is yes. Okay, thank you. And then there was one more question from Luca. He said, uh, two days ago when I fell asleep, I went out of my body and saw a being. It was a female energy, large eyes, possibly from Shakani race. Can you ask, did I really have an interaction with that being? Oh, please don't write. Um... And can I know something about, something more about where is it from and who is it, etc. I felt a strong connection. Could you please describe to me again the being? Um, hold on. Um, it was a female energy, large eyes, possibly from the Shakani race. Yes, it is one of his guides. He is correct. The Shikani race, yes. He had an interaction with one of his guides. And it will happen again. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any more questions? Okay. I, I probably could, <laughs> if no one else does. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Alma Talk, this is Valerie. Yes, Valerie. Again. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, as, as a group, um, we've, we've really been uh, doing a lot of meditations together, and I feel like this really, really helps. And I personally would love to see uh, peace in this world. And I think that's the first step toward contact, is showing that we can allow peace with each other. So my question is, does, doing a lot of meditations. does our meditations help this peace effort? Oh, yes, my friend, yes. Even as you individually meditate, yes. Your power is so great each of you individually, you are all still connected to the human collective. So when each of you med meditate, no matter the timing or if you do it together or alone, it is influencing the human collective. And if it is persistent, and it is wonderful that meditation is being used so prolifically on your planet now. It's an ancient tool that has been offered to you for such a long time. And now, thank you to the awakening of your internet. It is something more and more of you are doing and sharing and enjoying and learning much from. So yes, please understand, most definitely, when you are meditating, you are making a difference. And if your intention is for world peace, then yes, that is where it will be received. Understand the power of you as the individual. We just had a worldwide meditation for peace yes can you say if that had an impact yes there is there is actually several that are done that are quite large and they're done on a monthly basis many hundreds of thousands participate they have great impact and they are having great impact please understand once this energy has been sent 
it empowers a collective. Now, when the collective has been defined on how to resolve what it is you are meditating on, it will start to manifest. It will begin to create. You will begin to see results. But because it is a transference of energy, and at this point in your vibrational selves, the energy transference does take some time. So there may be some delay. And this is often where people give up on the idea of meditation. They do not understand that there is a delay because a new frequency is being created. But with such a large collective, the persistence is the key and the results will be as intended. But it is very important also for you internally as well as externally when you have these intentions to meditate, all of you. In the idea of manifestation, does it help if we keep this in our mind, like as if we're manifesting anything else? Yes, you can use it as a tool of manifestation, most definitely, yes. Just please remember, the final step of the manifestation is to experience the creation almost as a premonition. Mm -hmm. That is the final step. Add that to your law of attraction. And also be very specific. The universe will take you literally. So when you are in the process of manifestation, please be very specific about what it is you are asking for and that it be not at the expense of any other, whatever it is you wish to manifest. Now, of course, if you wish to manifest world peace and yet that manifests manifest perhaps into eliminating what you define an enemy, which would essentially mean doing what you call wiping out part of your populace. I do not believe this is what the humans who are meditating for world peace intend. Mm -hmm. They intend for unity. They, they plan for unison. That is what they are asking for. So please, when you are meditating for world peace, please do it in such a way that you are asking for peace for all. That you come together and you unify. Not that some part of the world in destruction is eliminated. Yes. And do you have any personal messages for me today? Valerie, yes. Since your arrival in Hukulu, my friend, you have moved forward quickly. You have dealt with some loss. And you have experienced some hardship in your lifetime. But you have found some peace within Hukulu along with many others that you interact with and you are greatly loved and appreciated as you deserve and as all the others of Hukulu deserve also. So I would like to simply say to you I'm very pleased that you found the community of Hukulu and I'm very honored to have met you. Well, thank you so much. I'm very grateful too. I'll let someone else now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alma Tak, for being here today, for coming and sharing You're your welcome. energy, your words with us. And You're very welcome. For being kind with your time. And we would like now to uh, end it here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. May I say much love to all. Bless the wonder of you, Glow. And I shall see you all very soon. Namaste, my friends. Namaste. Thank you. I'm going to talk again. How are you doing, Kim? Do you need some water? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, thank you, Sabrina. <laughs> I was thinking of checking on you, but you were flowing so well. Yeah, how is awesome, I don't... Oh, good. <laughs> uh, how is everybody? <laughs> we're very good. 
Yeah, very yeah, good. Blown, blown away by that. That was. Alma Talk really, really, really came through wonderfully today. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you, Kim. You did him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm so pleased. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, all guys. <laughs> he did a really good job. Thank so. you. Mm. Thank you, too. <laughs> uh, do I we think. have any announcements? Do, would you like to make any announcements, Roy? While we yes, I would. Yes. Um, I'd like to make an announcement um, for Kim, actually. And that is if anybody is interested in having private sessions with Alma Talk, Endu, Parak, and the other beings that Kim does channel, and she's expanding more, please get in touch. Um, we might even do something a little special for Christmas. So we might do a little giveaway for Christmas as a present to a lucky member. Uh, but me and Kim will talk more about that and discuss that and announce that very, very soon. Apart from that, um, have a lovely Christmas, I guess, because the next time we speak will be... Um, yeah. Yeah, it'd be Christmas Day for everyone. Well, it'd be Boxing Day for us in the UK. Boxing Day for you guys, so. yeah. Oh. Have a very Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, have a good one, everyone. Yes, enjoy, everyone. And yeah. we will be back on Boxing Day, I believe. Um, Kim is going to be back again um, for this week. And then I think Jim's back in the new year. Um, so, like I said, if, it's, if there is any um, Christmas time questions that you need personally answering, please get in touch with Kim through her page on the humancolony.org website. Um, that would be fantastic. Kim, do you have anything you want to say? Yeah. I just want to thank everybody. Um, it's always such a pleasure. Um, I feel so humbled by you all, and I'm so pleased that I can offer you this gift. And... Uh, Thank you, Hugh Glow. <laughs> We're all amazing. So let's have a great next year, huh? Uh -huh, so that. <laughs> thank you, Kim. And can you tell uh, yes, Topia? Yes, thank you. Hi? Tell Topia? Yeah, just tell Topia hi when you talk oh, to her again. Definitely, yes. She's been around, so I think we might get a visit soon. Awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> look out for an impromptu. Uh, Topia channeling. <laughs> She's always in front of you. You've really got to be on the synchronistic button to get that one, I think. Poor <laughs> <laughs> uh, Topia. Okay. okay, so we've been Human Colony. Um, we've been around for a few years now, and we have uh, astral experiences to the to the colonies that have been created for humans to interact with um, our space brothers so we can increase contact and further the understanding and relationship between the both. So if you're interested, please sign up to the website humancolony.org and let's make 2016 an absolutely manifesto year. All my love and we'll speak to you soon. Um, let's do a blessing now. Oh. We Maybe just do was. a shout out to Jim too, please. Hello, Jim. We love you. So, we hope you have a good yes. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Jim, I I hope you're enjoying your uh, your day off. So, um, so I'll do a little short blessing here. Okay. Wish yeah. Maxwell with his move as well. So he'll be back in two thousand six. Yes. So everybody will be back. <laughs> yeah. Even my voice. <laughs> <laughs> they sound very sexy though. Right <laughs> so I wanna say let's see. I'll do it in English first. Thank you. So I say thank you, great God of the universe. Thank you for all the gifts that you've given us this year that you shared with us. Thank you for the light 
and the understanding of ourselves and others. Thank you for showing us joy and inner peace and tranquility. Thank you for all the lessons. Thank you for all the understandings. Thank you for all the brothers and sisters that we have created in this group. Thank you for opening us up to ourselves, to knowing who we truly are. Thank you for opening the universe to us. And may we create a nest of love in which all are able to stand. Namaste. Namaste, amen. Takarika nana nakali akari akata nana skuru kolu akarakata kata kio kuru ala kala nana nana kuru akala liyu kuru akala na kario koto no sukuru kuala kali akarakata tono rukuli akiari koto ru akala ka no rukulu akali akari koto no rukulu kuakata toro no skuru akata. Nari akali okoto, no skuru ala nani aka, tari okotu arakata, tolo no suara, nari ki okolo kolo nuru akata ki okotu kuaka, oru ana ki aki okuru alaka, tara na skuru alaka, tara ye akala alio nuru akata kata. Thank you, Sabrina. That was really lovely. What a beautiful way to finish up. <laughs> Thank you all. And much love to everyone. And please keep going. I know that right now many are having many challenges. Um, but please know that on the other side, you will find yourself that on the other side there is joy and calmness that occurs within the mind when you surrender to yourself. On that note, goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Beautiful. Bye. Namaste. Namaste.